Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind. I'm your host, Maine, here as always with my co-host, Josh. This week on the show, we're going to recap Fight to Win Pro 78 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the IBJJF American Nationals, and ACBJJ14 in Moscow, Russia, as well as do a little preview for Fight to Win Pro 79 somewhere in the country. That somewhere being Columbus, Ohio. But before we get into that, a little bit of news. How's your week been, Josh? Good. Been swimming and doing all sorts of fun stuff. How, how's your weight? 197, bitch. So you're close. You're like, what? Your weight, you're, I uh, told you it wasn't fucking hard. Like, I could take a solid dump and lose four pounds. Yeah, but before, Josh, you've had some issues with, you know, the making of the weight. Because you know, I've been uh, making of the lazy. Yeah. Do you have a scale that works this time? Yes, yes, I do. Thank God. So what are you, seven pounds over? Yes. With like, you know, 15 weeks to go? <laughs> Give or, or a month yeah something like that 27 days not not good at the math josh so glad to hear you're on weight in other news uh grappling industries is going to put on wagner hosha versus boogie martinez they gonna get paid mm-hmm. so that was match was supposed to happen for ebi and it's now gonna happen for grappling industries in miami good luck betting against wagner in miami is it going to be a cjj match i don't think so i think it's just going to be a regular grappling uh match i don't think it's no time limit i think it's just that 10 minute for that 10 minute 10 minute format that they used for dante leone so i'm happy about it i wanted i wanted to see the match i think wagner should take it handily you're talking about i think they should allow slapping i think with any wagner match you should allow (laughs) slapping just because i think it'd be hilarious yeah like watching the face wagner makes when he tkos nathan orchard via slaps was one of the greatest grappling moments i've ever seen he just looks giddy, and he's just on top in the mount, just riding the mount, just raining slaps down upon his face, and it was great. I want to see Wagner with slaps every match. Palm strikes. They palm weren't strikes. slaps. No, T was slapping him. He's palm striking him. So that match is coming up soon, and uh, I'm excited for it. In other news, not a whole lot else going on. Flow bowling is coming out. Get oh, ready yeah. for that. Yeah, in six days. Six days and not ten hours, roughly. You can watch professional bowling with your flow grappling account if you pay for the year. Your flow sports account. Your flow sports account. So not only now can you watch gymnastics. And climbing. And rock climbing. Well, not rock climbing, but, uh, you know, when they build up the walls and they do free climb and all that other crap. But thank you. I'm I'm not educated in that. Uh, Gymnastics, that, volleyball, softball. Regular wrestling. This is technically amateur wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like Uh, collegiate wrestling? Yes. Uh, They used to have professional wrestling, but that floundered out. Thanks, Flo. What else do they have on gymnastics? I already said that. Cheerleading, I think. They have track. They have running. Track, yeah, yeah. They have a bunch of stuff. They have a lot of flow things. I think they have flow rodeo. Wouldn't be surprised at all. But now they have flow bowling. And uh, Josh, I'm got, stoked. Josh texted me about this. He goes, flow bowling is coming out. I'm like, what does that mean? And he went, flow is launching a bowling service. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to watch it. I watch all the other flows. Like there's flow elite, which is pretty much like CrossFit. I don't really like CrossFit, but I watch it anyway. Like I'll watch the CrossFit games because I'm like, <sighs> I like how you're calling them the fittest person on earth. And here's a instance. A couple years ago, they put a pegboard as the last event. And these motherfuckers could not climb up a pegboard at all. The, the fittest people in, uh, in the, CrossFit. The fittest people on earth couldn't climb a pegboard. Or, or do when, a pull-up. Or do an actual pull-up. <laughs> <laughs> or what else? Uh they introduced swimming one year, and it just they were just flopping in the water. For CrossFit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched that. Uh, they introduced a bike part if to you, it. You want to like, say they're the fittest people on the earth? What they do is when the event starts, you draw out of a hat, and that's the event for the competition. There's like 50 billion events that they do. Yeah. And, and they're should, all ridiculous. You just draw it's out great. of a hat, and then they have to go to that, that area of the competition area and do whatever that thing is. Okay, now you're freestyle mountain biking go they would legit have races and it'd be like okay first they would do like a mini triathlon thing it's like you got to do the ocean swim and then you got to bike and then you got to run and and you watch these people swim and you're like they're they're flailing like fishes and then you watch them 
people are like drowning each other. They're swimming over top of each other. It's great. Then you get, watch them get on bikes and some of these people can't ride bikes. It's great. You're so an if you, adult. If you haven't known, it's uh, been a very, very slow week for grappling <laughs> news. So that pretty much does it for the news section of the podcast. Flow Bowling is coming out. Hell uh, yeah. Tune in. Strike. In uh, some other news, Kurt Osiander's promotion, KO Finishers, had their second event this weekend. Totally. To- well, we couldn't find anything originally to really cover it or say who the matches and everything were. So it's kind of hard to cover, but we found it on the YouTubes. Uh, I really hope everybody that wins gets the little statue that they showed at the beginning saying, like, the show will start shortly. And it's it's literally a statue of Kurt's hand giving you the middle finger, and it's all gnarled and taped up. It's great. Uh Literally, this is how it started. So they're like, all right, here's these two guys. And they're standing in. It's like, all right, uh, start the clock. And he's like, the clock. It's right there in your fucking phone. Even I know that. I'm a caveman. And Kurt's literally yelling at one of the guys who run the event to like start the event because he can't find a clock. And then he goes, oh, wait, did I say that out loud? Yeah, sometimes I say things out loud. Yeah. It was, it was like there was no ref on the mat. It was, it was a cool event. I mean, There I, was no I, ref to start, but yeah. then there was a guy showing up. Right. I haven't finished watching all of it yet. I've just, you know, started to piece through it. Uh, Sacknoff's on the event. There's some other guys on the event. No commentary. No commentary. It looks like, again, it looks like a lot of these promotions when they're when they run their first through like their fourth event. They're ironing the kinks out, trying to figure out their format, trying to figure out the camera angles and the lighting. It's cool. Like, I like that more promotions are putting on super fight matches for local area grapplers and people in jiu-jitsu to compete on and showcase their skills not in just a tournament setting where you know not even your family's going to show up to support you because no one wants to watch a f- seven hour tournament to see you have five minutes of mat time but like a super fight is a little bigger deal it's a better format for viewing and I'm, I'm happy that we're seeing more and more organizations putting out super fights this was kurt's organization ko finishers it's on youtube go take a look at it it's a it seems like a fun event so on to our recap of acb jj14 in moscow russia uh, this event had a bunch of dropouts. Well, not a bunch of dropouts, like... Just match changes and so on and so forth. Uh, it went from 23 to 21 matches. Yep, there was two matches that were just mixed all together. There was some late replacement, some changes. And uh, again, overall, good good event. Super little, long event, as little, per usual. A little boring this time around. Yeah, I mean, it's good. There were some good there, matches. There were some good matches. There was some shit that happened that you wouldn't expect. Somebody got knocked out. Yep. That was fun to watch. That was pretty interesting. And then he got a he got called a K. It got called a uh, rear naked choke, and I was like, "That's no, that's called KO, bro." He got kneed in the face and went to sleep. And he's like, "Oh, rear naked choke," and I was like, Yay! "What? They're gonna give it to him? Holy shit!" Yay! So, first match, Hani Barbosa defeated Samir Chantre by decision. Marcos Oliveira and Gabriel Lucas were disqualified for a passive fight. Augusto Mendez won. How about that? I thought I thought Kim Tara was going to beat him. He won over Kim Tara by decision. Gabriel Marangoni defeated Osvaldo Moisinho by decision. My curse worked. I cursed him and his family last week, and it worked. <laughs> All right, Josh, let me not get on your back. Uh, Gabriel there. Marangoni is a fucking boss when it comes to not getting swept or not seating positions like he would get swept but he would bounce right back up and not allow he would not allow it to happen there was a couple times in this match where he was swept yo he was stuck in a deep ass omoplata i thought he was gonna get tapped and then time ran out and he got out yeah but he just stopped some shit from happening he did one of those timed takedown things and got points for that which essentially gave him the win yeah that's that's Drysdale was me. like, I don't think he did enough. I think I was like, nobody cares. You call Herbert Santos Herbert. Okay. <laughs> That's your barometer, Josh. He messes up names. Dude, sometimes names. Drysdale just starts fucking talking. I'm like, just just stop. So, and there was a lot of audio issues as well where one one uh, commentator was not on. What, funny thing was at the beginning of this, as always, for some reason, the first match of ACBJJ always the first half of the match has no like commentary it's always you can hear the commentary kind of in the background like through like a secondary mic and then about halfway through the match they fix it 
the last like four ACBJJs this has happened, and it happened again this one, it just made me laugh. Yeah. Next match. Uh, this one was a surprise. Uh, it blew my fucking mind. Ali Magomedov defeated Bruno Savato, Savato, Frazado by toe hold. He beat him in the first round by points, and then in the second round, he transitioned to a tight ass toe hold, and Bruno Frazado straight up just yelled. Yeah, because he was facing the other way on the toe hold, and he crunches the foot, and I was oh, like, "Oh shit!" I was just fucking and shocked. It blew my mind. Him. We got in that real uh, quick chat, and we were like, "Hey, holy shit!" Bruno just got tapped. It was not expected, but hats off to Ali Magomedov. It looked really good. He's got a good guard game. And, you know, he got the win over a legit fucking legend. Oh, yeah. In Frazado. Next match. Here we go. This is where it's going to get really bad. Mohamed Kokov defeated Georgi Karahanian by choke. And I thought this match was going to end in like the first 10 seconds when Karahanian had a guillotine that he just launched himself into. And uh, he got out. There ended up being like a brief doctor's stoppage because they were cleaning up a cut. And then later, uh, Ma- uh, Kokov, I almost called him Magomedov, uh, won by, by a choke. Guillotine to be specific. And uh, they were trading it back and forth. Uh, Karahanian had it at first, uh, Kokov had it later, it, it, you know, a lot of grappling. There was a stoppage because there was some blood, uh, but Kokov ended up back with another guillotine in the last about minute and a half of the match and finishes off Karahanian. Tiago Sa defeated Ayub Magomedov by submission. And what a submission it was, Josh. You making fun of me saying submission? Yeah, Josh. Oh, exactly. I am. Sorry, uh, Tiago Sa won by a sick ass toe hold. Yes, he did. He it was weird. hella toe hold. It was one of the toe holds that he finished it when the leg was still pretty extended. He didn't even need to turn the angle all the way and put the toes Just in the butt. Just fucking ground that shit out. Yeah, he basically it's one of the ones he did. You do it with almost the arm, like the pressure of the of your what's the word I'm looking for, Josh? Your forearms, and you turn. You can turn the foot even if you don't have the knee bent, which is kind of cool. Which sucks because it's super. Shit hurts your feet. But uh, yeah, gets it done. Chokes his foot. And this is a real interesting one. Adlan Batayev wins over Murad Machayev by choke. Is what it's listed as in the result and what they announced on the broadcast. They listed they, sorry, rear they naked choke. on the broadcast as a rear naked choke, which this is unlike any rear naked choke I had ever seen for a number of reasons, mostly that it was a knee to the head and it knocked him out. Yeah, and a scramble. <laughs> Be- meaning it's not a rear naked choke at all, but ACBJJ called it a rear naked choke victory, even though uh, Atlan Batayev knocked out uh, Machayev in the basically in the scramble. Atlan has his back, and man, these names are killing me. Murad goes to roll under, almost like through a knee bar, but he goes to basically get out of the uh, the standing back take, and Atlan basically turns an angle and goes to basically spin around the back and knees him in the temple. And he just drops. And then he gets on top of him and kind of motions to the ref like, hey, he's unconscious now. And the ref goes, oh, oh shit, and like stops the bout. And they look at him and they talk to him. And then the commentators are going to basically talking about Braulio and Drysdale going, are they going to restart this match? Or are they just going to, like, what are we going to do? And they stop the match. And they announce it as a rear naked choke victory. And they kind of went, that was weird. And they didn't talk about it again at all. They just kind of glossed over it. So. That was the weirdest match I've ever seen in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it was it was very weird. Lucas Hosha defeated Daoud Adayev by armbar. Uh, I'm pretty sure we said, like, hey, Lucas Hosha is going to win. Every time we've seen Daoud, I think he, he loses Man, the last I, he's few either times. The guy, he's, I always mess him up. He's one of the Russian guys. He's either the one that has that sick toe hold or the sick footlock finish, or he's the guy that had that sick toe hold finish on him. And I always forget which one it is. Oh, he got toe holded. Yeah, he got toe holded. Yeah. Uh, next match Ali Bagov versus Godzamarad Hiramagomedov by short choke. I'm. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to say these names. 
Next up, we have a match that was originally not meant to be. Uh, I can't remember who Homolo was against. And I, I do remember that Lucas Hulk Barbosa was supposed to be against Felipe Pena. And we were amped about that match. Super that amped. I called matchup. Pena winning that one. But what we got instead, which was still good for me. Pretty great, yeah. Lucas Barbosa versus Homolo Bajal. And if you haven't checked it out, uh, BJJ Scout just did the first part of a study on Lucas Barbosa. Ooh, I have not seen that, Josh. I'm very excited. So, yeah. Uh, bulk, bulk, Hulk, <laughs> bulk and skull, Power Rangers. Boop, Yo, he boop, is bulk, boop, though. Boop, boop, boop. He's thick. Dude, I love his gi, too. It has just Barbosa on the back and those big red letters, and then it has just the big red Atos letters on the back. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, Hamala got outpointed. Hulk just just muscled him. He took him, he won by two yeah, points in the first every, round. He outpointed him every round. Right. The second round. The, the the match started with Hulk with two points. I was like, what? What's going on? And then Humolo pulled guard in like 20 seconds, so he lost points. And then they fixed the scoreboard, and it was two to nothing. And then guys guard passed way later into the match because it was a lot of Humolo playing full guard. But he passed his guard. Yeah, he opened, he opened, credit to him. He opened the guard a little bit. Yeah. Now and again. And then he got his shit passed. He did get his shit passed. And then, you know, it was just rinse and repeat all three rounds. Cool match. Go yeah, check out match. the study. Go check Go check out uh, the match. Even though it definitely was a slower match, it didn't feel like it was like a stally match. Both guys no. were kind of were doing things actively, even though the match didn't really – it we didn't really go anywhere. It was mm-hmm. – you got activity in the guard. You got activity for trying to pass. It was, it was good. It was a good match. I enjoyed it. Indeed. Next match, Igor Silva defeated Abdurkaman Bilarov by points. Yeah, she skipped a match. Did I? Oh, I did. Excuse me. Abdul Aziz Abdul Kaval Habov by Ed, <laughs> defeated Edward Vartanyan. You, you made points. a joke there with like your laugh, but that was actually really, really good. I, I, that was I, beautiful pronunciation of that very, very Russian name. Uh, I think it's Russian. <laughs> More than likely. Uh, then again, Igor Silva defeated Abdurkaman Bilarov by points. That was. Pretty fast-paced, but Igor slowed down as the match went on. That's uh, Abdurkaman is the guy that that heel hooked Herbert Santos and Nogi in that one event. This guy's been really good Nogi, but this was a gi match. Hmm. And I like the other guys bounce around. Like they don't they don't pigeonhole guys to a single gi or to Nogi. They let them bounce around. They move them around. So they have rankings in the gi and in Nogi for ACBJJ. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, there was a couple there was a post and i think gordon ryan reposted it about the boss not being happy with people just kind of stalling which i like like you're, you're trying to put on professional jiu-jitsu you're trying to make it entertaining you got to get a rule set and you have to get competitors that aren't gonna stall so, sometimes it's hard i don't know yeah man you gotta go though we'll see we'll see muhammad or is that Muhammad? I'm going to say Muhammad. Muhammad Berkamov defeated Aslambek Sad- uh, Saidov by points. Zhao Gabriel Hosha defeated Nicholas Mergali by points. I was surprised about that. I, oh, sorry, I wasn't surprised it about that. It was a that. size thing. You yeah. could tell that he was just having issues with his size at a certain point. And... Mergali got like tossed and and he was very active and there was that sequence in the beginning with the Omoplata sweeps, but Xiao Gabriel's just way bigger than him. Yeah. And he just when he wanted to be in a position, that's where they stayed. And that's kind of what we talked about a little last week about the matches. Like Xiao Gabriel's a big, strong dude. Mergali's getting big and strong, but Roche is fucking huge. Yeah. He's he's one of the bigger big dudes dude. in that in that class. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with the speed and the experience he has, it's a tough matchup. And you know, I'm always surprised to see Margali get beat, even though you know he does get beat occasionally. But damn, yeah. Albert Durayev defeated Magomed Ismailov via points. Luis Panza defeated Rodrigo Kavaka by rear naked choke. I thought there was going to be a, like a sick 
footlock battle to the death. And that didn't happen. So hats off to Ponza. Kavaka's still a legend, but you know, he's getting up there in age. Yeah, that yeah, you have a new younger guy versus an older guy. It's it's uh it's kind of rough sometimes. Sometimes. Yusuf Rysov defeated Diego Sanchez by points, and Diego Sanchez was confused why he lost. <laughs> uh, it was just really amusing his face, like Wah. So, title match. Ooh. Joao Miao versus Ari Farias. We just saw this uh, three weeks ago at Worlds. Four weeks ago, something like that. Something like that. Joao Miao wins by points. This match looked pretty much exactly like the Worlds match, except it was longer. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And at one point, point, Farias got a little tired and fucked up in the last round. Yeah, so Joao won three of the five rounds. The other two were draws. Super close. Super close both rounds. It was always like two something or four to two or four four, something like this. Last round though, seven zip. Right? Gets the sweet uh gets points for uh Farias escaping the toehold by going out of bounds. Uh then this weird technicality of like a takedown. Not, so not, that not no, so what hap- what he, happens is I, I wouldn't score that. They both basically pull guard. They didn't both pull. Ari like pulled as Meow went down and then and Meow then, came back up and then he gets two for that because he, he scooted in and then counts came up as a sweep I don't it's a super gray area like it was really weird anyway so you're like 4-0 Meow starts coming in forward and Farias just sort of grabs his leg half-heartedly and Meow just pulls it right on out and gets to side control so now it's seven zip and that's where that ends like I said, if Meow had a little bit more time in the Worlds, he would have beat Farias, but that was that match at Worlds. He beat him at this one, retains his title. Good match. I mean, this is this is what every time these guys compete, this is what the match looks like. It's, Pretty much. It's that 50-50, that leg kind of drag position where Farias is trying to grab in his pants and pull him over and sweep him, and Meow's trying to turn away and change the leg angle to get out it, this is what this match looks like not a bad match but it's a mirror match of exactly what we saw at worlds a couple weeks ago yep zubaira tugov defeated josh emmett by points yeah i i, I didn't I, I i didn't even watch a match all right i didn't i i, I had no real interest at this point in that match cool <laughs> Uh, it's good enough reason. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, after the meow match, where I was like, "Oh man, this is a long and uh, I wasn't sitting through another long and that had no. Uh, I like how I'm saying long and yeah, no a big, long one. No big stakes for jujitsu. No. So your main event of the evening was Lucas Laprie versus Davi Hamos for the 75 kilo title. So yeah. That shit was also uneventful. I kind of don't even want to cover this match either. This match was 25 minutes, five rounds. There were a total of four points scored in this entire match. There were more penalties in this match than there were points. The first three rounds had no points whatsoever. Three mm-hmm. draw rounds in a row. Zero, zero. There's with a some, whole lot of penalties nothing. on each side for... That shit was boring. Fourth round, finally, uh, Laprie drops down and snatches up a leg for a single and starts, like, trying to finish. Hamo starts to back out. Then D- Laprie sort of, like, pushes him forward. And they fall off the mats, which makes it look like that David is, Davi, sorry, is trying to escape. And because they fall off the mat and Laprie is in the process of doing a takedown, he gets the points for the takedown. That was the fourth round points, only points scored in the fourth round. Fifth round. He's... Scored a cool little sweep from like a lapel uh, wrap around his leg and came up with a sweep. This shit was boring as fuck, this match. I mean, a lot of these matches now. were kind of like, yeah, but who who cares? Like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him compete again if it, that's going to happen. It was not a, not particularly an entertaining match. This one was like the slowest ACB I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I see. Yeah, it was pretty slow in a lot of places. It was it was long. I think the entire event video 
is something like five or six hours. It was long. There was a lot of decisions. Yeah. That's ACB. Hopefully uh, the boss is like, look, I will kill you and hide you in some mountain in some former Soviet Union country. Uh, Start being a little bit more active. So that's ACB JJ14. Uh, you can find individual links to the matches on various different websites. Go back and watch some of the ones you want to watch. YouTube. YouTube, yep. It's available for free. Always great. That's the event. So on to the IBJJF 2018 American Nationals. Maine said we'd cover it. So here it is. In hindsight, this event is uh, is much, much smaller than we anticipated. Than Maine anticipated. Yeah, we had, we had black belt, many, many black belt brackets with less than four competitors. It was a smaller event than we anticipated. There were some cool matchups that happened. Uh, ben Henderson is, that in fact, Benson Henderson. He went against Sean Roberts and got triangled. That was... Uh, that happened. That was that a was match a, that happened. That was a two minute and 15 second match. Uh, ben shot in really quick on Roberts starting to pull, got the two. And then Robert started working his guard and was immediately attacking on triangles and arm bars and then finished with the triangle. I'm just curious how he can be listed as Ben Henderson when everyone else has to be listed by their entire fucking name. Maybe he changed it. You think his... His, his card is info. Who knows? Hmm. So he's listed as Ben Henderson. So From JCBJJ, which is John Crouch BJJ. Not The Lab. Which I thought, which threw me off. I was like, "Oh yeah, it's not Benson Henderson because that's how he's been listed before." So that was interesting. Yep. But you know, not a lot of, not a, not a lot of deep brackets. Some people didn't show up for their matches. You know, kind of a letdown. There were some cool matches, and and don't get me wrong, it's all up on flow grappling. Uh, or it's it's in the process. It's on the process, right? as some people in on Reddit are pissed that they just didn't film their matches. Yo, sneak that shit in. Don't sneak that shit in. Be in the stands. Film your fucking match. No, it's easier to catch people filming from the stands. Yo, sneak that shit in. Right. And then at that point, if you touch my shit, you're touching my property, which means I have every right to hit you right upside the goddamn are you touching my phone that's actually not well, true by the way guess a what private event i don't give a shit right. guess what eat a fucking dick because they're not recording everything and i hate that they're like oh here we're gonna do this and they'll be up that shit happened to, at the very very first abu dhabi trials in florida yo they lost okay i'm listening right at the beginning of the entire event the guy gets on the microphone and he's like the entire event is being recorded. You are not allowed to record. Your matches will be put on a DVD. I was like, yo, that's going to be a lot of matches on. That's going to be a multi-set match, like a multi-DVD ma- uh, DVD set. set. Thank you. Can't fucking talk. And they were super fucking strict about it. And it was in like a fucking high school. So it's really easy to see people recording. They legit stopped matches and were like, hey, you, you can't record. These are being recorded. They were like, bullshit. There's only like three cameras. How are you recording everything? That fucking DVD came out. Not every match was on there. You know, and a whole lot of people that wanted to film their shit didn't get on there. You can't trust that your shit's going to be on there. No. Like, and, and I don't, are you really going to trust that? Like, No. Hide your shit somehow. Yeah, they've lost. Uh, like they, they happened, this happened at ADCC trials, like for the twenty seventeen ADCCs in twenty sixteen. There's a bunch of like trials. They were like, "Oh, we're filming the trials." Matches are just gone. They were on flow. They were broadcast on flow. Lost. They've lost the archives. I had a buddy that competed in the trials, and he was like, "Cool, I want to see my match again." It never got uploaded, and they're like, "Oh, we lost it." So his match is gone. They were not allowed to record the event. His match is gone. Record Yo, your matches. Hide your shit. Don't be a dumbass and put your fucking camera inside your gi. I've ref two matches where that's happened. Cameras fall out. But, like, you bring your shit with you and then sort of, you know, be fucking sneaky sneak about it. So that's all we got to say about the American Nationals. Um, again, because it's a 2X event for rankings, I'm kind of surprised that it was as small as it was. Two star. 
two star Not event. Two X. That's what it means, though. It means the two X event. Two star. You get double XP this weekend if you competed at IBJJF. Fuck American you! You only Nationals. get two stars, bro. So. That's low XP. So that was the event. So on to events we actually do care about. Fight to Win Pro <laughs> 78 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This event paid out a total of $18,805 in salaries and commissions and was headlined by John Combs versus Brandon Bergeron. This event had 34 matches and had a 50% submission rate for the card. 17 out of 34. Yep, that's 50%, Josh. So, on to the results, starting from the bottom and going up top. Starting from the purple belts. Derek Schindler defeated Dustin Hijel. That's probably a misspelling. By choke. And that was fight of the night for the purple belts. James Clark defeated Michael Curtis by decision. Bobby Lee, not the comedian, defeated Mina Ibrahim by straight ankle lock. Sarah Wellamson defeated Grace Bader by split decision. Travis Pers- oh God. Przinski. Yeah, there we go. Travis Przinski defeated Philip Yanazui. Fuck. By Flying Triangle. That was submission of the night for the Purple Belts. <laughs> Rafael Salzano defeated Dallas Jorgensen. <laughs> There's no uh, method of submission list for that particular match. Joshua Kohler defeated Mark Renville by split decision. Carl Busian. Busan? Busian. Ugh, fuck. Defeated Charles Johnson by reverse triangle. Ashkan... Morat, oh God. Yo, Cleveland with the, it's not Cleveland, <laughs> Minneapolis with the names. <laughs> Dear God, you know we're bad at this. Uh, Where the fuck is John Smith? And like Mervari. Mike def- Austin. Defeated John Fro by decision. Ethan Bauman defeated Tom Trutnaw by mounted triangle. L.M. Williams defeated Michelle Donovan by split decision. I can't even read today. David Scora defeated Joseph McKinnon by armbar. Elias Barada defeated Charles Anozi by decision. Danny Tran defeated Kerry Bingham by triangle. Brian Olson defeated Dustin. Is that the same guy? Is that the same person? Go back down. He dusty hit. Dustin no, and Dusty. N- Different. No way. Are they brothers and it's just Dusty and Dustin? No idea. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it's Minnesota. I totally, I, <laughs> you're such a piece of shit. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Defeated Dustin Hegel by armbar. On uh, to the kids and teens. Oh, man. <laughs> so, okay. So, He's a little Minnesota. smooth behind the curtain here. <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock at night, and I have not had AC in my house for the past three days. So my basement is about 90 degrees. It's been about 100 degrees in Baltimore the past three days. Josh and I are sweating. We've been sweating for about two hours recording the show, and it's starting to get to us. So that's why we're having such a hard time right now. I'm sweating. Josh is sweating. We're trying to Main get through over it. here making fun of Minnesota. But it's rough. It's not Minnesota's <laughs> fault. It's our fault. <laughs> I need AC in my house right now. Oh, man. Imagine what it felt like at my work. With all those, uh, with the oven and the grill and all that shit going on. Yeah, Josh, but you're getting paid to be at work. Okay, we're in my base. We're in the coldest part of my house right now, sweating at eleven o'clock at night. I probably shouldn't have wore sweatshorts. That's on you, man. Cut that weight. Maybe, maybe somebody should have texted me and said, "Hey, I don't have AC. Wear something revealing." I thought I did at some point. I've bitched about it. No. All right. Well, no. it's my bad. Then you're like a tank top. You're fine. So <laughs> on to the kids and teens results. Zach Gal defeats Sebastian. Uh, Marciano by decision. Cito Tuttle defeated Ty Schmidt by decision. And that was fight of the night for the kids and teens. On to the brown belts. Nick Spacek defeated Gilson Esteem, uh, Esteem, Gilson Adal by Esteema Lock. That was submission of the night for the brown belts. My man, the night pigeon, Troy Everett, did come out to Prince. He did. So I did call that. Didn't come out to Little Corvette, though. But Little he, Red Corvette. Which, again, it would have been amusing seeing him in a power wheel just driving down the ramp. But he came out to the the Joker rap. I can't remember what his song. It's from the original ba- the original Batman soundtrack where Jack Nicholson was the Joker. And uh, and now what's funny is I, I said his name earlier and now I for- I'm forgetting it. 
the other Batman guy, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, thank you. Beetlejuice. Man, what a creepy, awesome guy that is. Uh, he came out to that. He was throwing out money, wore the hat, tossed it. It was awesome. Not not his best walkout work, but still up there. It was good. good. It was good. I he was defeated fair. Richard Lee by Darce. Man, he really leaned on him that entire match. Mike Layton defeated Robbie Garrell by Triangle. Nate Howe defeated Tom Krenzel by Knee Bar. And that was fight of the night for the brown belts. Jimmy Barnes defeated Zygmars Evamois by decision. How can I say that name right? And I've been fucking up somewhat easier ones. Dude, I have no idea. But like we, like I said, you read the names because we know I'm worse. <laughs> ben Newman defeated Hayden Buckner by guillotine. Topher Braddock defeated Matthew Kraus by heel hook. Zach Jeffrey defeated Nick Spacek. Pulling double duty. Man, all these guys are pulling double duty by Pops decision. Nick we've seen Nick Spacek a bunch on Fight to Win. We've, we've seen him versus Tyler Coe, Eric Coe. Tyler Coe. Always call him Eric. No idea why. Hi, Eric. Thomas Menton defeated Evan Carruthers by straight ankle lock. Enrique Muniz defeated Jonathan Ranch by Ezekiel Choke. On to the black belt results. Jose Varela. Not Jose, Jose. Like Aldo. Like Aldo? Yes. Defeated Chris Daschle by decision. And that was fight of the night for the black belts. That was a pretty exciting match where Varela was just all over Daschle. Yeah, it's fight of the night. But it was just... <sighs> it was deserved fight of the night, Josh? Yeah. But Varela was moving it. Moving it and grooving it. He was all over him. It was great. It was beautiful. Matt Layton. Oh, Matt Layton. I'm actually surprised he was as low on the card as he was for this. Yeah, it was listed higher last week. I guess they just shuffled stuff around. I don't know, but he went to guard. Uh, Oscar Hip was game at the beginning, and then uh, Layton just threw up his legs, tried to triangle him, transitioned over him, fucking armbarred him like a goddamn monster. Yeah, you're like ranked number one in America for UAE, JJF. You're a monster. Like, you're a monster. The, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see him compete a lot. Mm -hmm. Ryan Potbaum, not Potterbottom, like I tried to call him last week, defeated Sergio the Mustache Her Hernandez. It's a pretty sick mustache. I'll give you that. They had. Uh, by decision, Zhao Alfredo Tavares. Joao Zhao. Defeated Mark Vives. Not Vives, like we've and been it's calling him. Vives. They clarified that on the show. The broadcast, Josh? The commentaries? The show? All right. That works. The show? It, it does, but I don't think it doesn't. It sounds stupid. Sort of like your nose breathing into the mic right now? My bad, man. It's super hot. <laughs> anyway, Barrett Yoshida defeated Kelly Johnson by Bravo Choke. That was submission of the night for the black belts. Yo, Yoshida was on it. Mm hmm. He, uh, <laughs> he was doing mm -hmm. Barrett Yoshida stuff. Well, he, what? It's Barrett Yoshida. Like, that's what the fuck he does. Like, <laughs> he's on it. He's aggressive. He's trying to kill someone every time he competes. He's getting a, he's getting a little older, but. I just like he how when you're announcing him and you've been around for so long, you just hear. You know, announcing this, a 10-time ADCC veteran, you're like, what? Have there been 10 ADCCs? Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. He's been in a lot of them. Yeah. He's a fucking OG for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like, goddamn. And he showed it today in, in this match. <sighs> goddamn. <laughs> I get, which is like bear. Like, I'm always surprised that you have a guy that's been through that many matches and oh, did we... this long. Yeah. They can still put up and still has the speed and the dexterity and like can still put up the amount of fight he puts up after all those years and after all that many miles on his body. And uh, not to mention he choked him unconscious. He did. Very unconscious. That's why it was submission of the night for the black belts. Yeah, it was just funny because we were discussing the match because they're up. They weren't instantaneously uploaded, but it were wasn't within, like a fucking week. They were up within 24 hours of it, of the event finishing. I can't really ask for more than that, in no. all honesty. Like, that's great. I'll deal with that. But he chokes him out, and he says he's like, he's out. They stop it. I think the, I think the ref stops it. Or, like, he talks to the ref, and the ref goes, the ref, like, taps on him, like, oh, shit, you're un unconscious. Barrett gets up, and he's very unconscious. 
Uh, yeah. Anyway, so he lifts up his feet, right? And the guy's like already kind of moving. And then he's like, oh, and he gets up and then he like, you know, he's like, I'm good ref. And then he picks up Yoshida and he's like, this guy won. And Maine and I have a discussion about the best way to recover somebody after they've been choked unconscious. So if you've ever taken any sort of first aid course whatsoever uh, in the past, let's say 15 years or so, they never tell you to lift up someone's legs who is unconscious and make the blood go back to their head. What they tell you to do is place them on their left side, make sure they're breathing and everything's fine, and then they will cover on their own, given some time. Jiu-Jitsu never got the memo for that. First of all, it doesn't really fucking matter. Let's get that through. And other plenty of people know that. It gets posted on message boards all the time. I don't know why they Dude, just don't put them on in fucking recovery sleep. position. This, like, this last year in competition, they came over, they rubbed his chest, and lifted his legs. And I went... Well, that's not going to help at all. And I've also had discussions like in my 6 a.m. classes where it's like, no, the blood flow gets back to the head that much quicker. It's like, no, no, it doesn't. The blood flow is going to get to the, the brain either way. You're cutting off the arteries, right? You're block. You're causing a blockage. You're causing arterial occlusion is, what you're, is the yes. tactical term. Yes. So now your your brain doesn't have any blood to function or oxygen for that matter because, you know, that gets carried around in your blood really yeah oh shit you knew that i do have a four-year degree in like sciencey stuff yeah i did you know that. knew that don't act like you're that stupid anyway so it your lights go out it's putting itself into you know uh well fuck i just had the word and it just it unconsciousness just, no what your brain is doing it's saving itself sleeping no uh not perseverance uh preserving itself and it, it's putting it in preserve mode where it's like, fuck, try to keep your brain alive. Maybe it's just like a short circuit and we're going to get this shit going, which is what happens. You know, the arteries become unoccluded and blood flow returns. Within a couple of seconds, you're awake and you're like, fuck, that was a good nap. And then you're like, shit, where am I? And then you're like, ah, fuck, I just got choked unconscious. That's all you need. Like, if that was the case where you needed fucking blood to your brain as quickly as possible, why don't they pick you up by your fucking ankles and put you on your head? I will say, though, I think a big reason for it is it looks really bad if you have three people st like standing around an unconscious body. If someone's doing something, at least it makes it look productive. Like, oh, they're holding his legs up. That helps. If you're just looking at him and waiting for him to come back awake, it doesn't look very good. Who fucking cares? I'm just saying. That might be another You reason. choked him unconscious. First of all, awesome, cool. Here, I'll use myself in this example. DC Open absolutes, I get choked unconscious, right? Is this after you made weight? It's the absolute. Obviously, I competed. All right. This was the previous DC Open. Okay. My original going from being fat to being thin. I remember that time. I get choked unconscious, and I do a little like shimmy shake down on the ground. The ref doesn't really grab my legs. And a couple of seconds later, right after my opponent let go of choking me, I woke up. And then I sat up and the ref was like, no, lay down. This is this is like a bad thing. And I'm talking to this guy. I'm like, look, fuckhead, I'm okay. It's like, I'm awake. I'm sitting up. I'm fine. So I call over the fucking medic. And the medic's like, well, do you know her? And I just went and I was like, that's this guy. This is the match. It's DC Open. It's this day. I got choked unconscious. I was winning. I was winning. And I was like, that guy just did it. And they were like, and they were like, are you sure you're okay? And I did like a fucking back roll. And then I did a kip up. And I was like, I'm perfectly fucking fine, as you can see. I got choked unconscious. My mouth tastes kind of funny. You know, it's got that weird pins and needles yeah, kind of smell. feeling. The smell, man. It's not a, it's, for it's me, not it's a, a smell. Whenever I get a choked unconscious, it's always a smell where I'm like, everything smells funny for like 10 minutes. How many times have you been choked unconscious? Dude, I went to sleep three times in 2017. Like really? Once a, yeah, I got no respect for the choke this last year. 2018, I'm trying to like not get choked unconscious that many times. I usually go out two to four times a year. I've been in the entire time I've done jujitsu, been out twice. No, no, it's for me. It's like a quarterly thing. Twice. Yeah, you respect chokes, Josh. I'm like, I'm going to get out. I fight to the last second, and then my brain goes sleep to sleep. Oh, I don't respect them. I try to fight it to the very last second, and normally I get there. Apparently, you know, those two times I did not. 
But, and what was funny was that my fight to win match, this was a little bit after DC Open, I got close to going out again. I was like, I can't, I cannot go to sleep on like a, a televised thing. I'm not doing that. And my wife probably would have freaked out, like, oh, Jesus. Yes. That's fine. I don't know. I'm still debating. Like, if I think I can get out, and I might go to sleep, and I'll, I might get out. I'll try to fight it. Don't get me wrong. I learn. But... I try to fight it. And then uh, I learn that I go to sleep, and I wake up like, ah, oh, damn it. I have the dumbest dreams when I go to sleep, too, which is the stupidest thing ever. I don't. I normally just woke up, and I was like, when that happened at DC Open, I was like, sweet, I fucking oh, won. Yeah. But I've been choked for, like, 30 seconds after, because the guy was pointing the wrong way in the, <laughs> in the room, and he continued to choke me unconscious after I was out for a while. And then I apparently was asleep for a long enough time where there was a crowd that formed around me in the gym. And, uh, yeah. Did they say you were snoring? My, eyes were, that... my <sighs> eyes were open and I was staring up into the light and not moving at all. And people came over and went, oh, God. And I heard, as I'm coming to, I hear, we're going to have to give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> and that was the first thing I heard as I'm coming back into consciousness. And I was like, oh, this is, oh, is going to be bad. And I woke up and was like, man, I got put to sleep again. We totally derailed this. Yeah, we did. Anyway, back onto it. Antoine Evans defeated Mike Miskowiak by straight ankle lock. And in our main event, John Combs defeated Brandon Bergeron by Comatine, the guillotine that John Combs does. Okay, that makes more sense. I read the result and I went... The what fuck? the fuck is that? It's a guillotine. It's like, oh, a comatine. His name is Com. Ah, I get it. it's uh, funny. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, John Combs was all over him. Don't get me wrong. He he went into mount. He was trying to collar choke him. Bergeron did a good job of escaping at first. Uh, it it went it went later into it, but John Combs guillotined him in his fancy little guillotining his ways. Comatine. Again, you know, as he was trying to escape, getting out from being collar choked, arm barred, whatever, he, you know, wrapped up his head from that mount position and you hear Seth in the background, come on, here's, your, you know, calling, here's your time, finish it up, John, so on and so forth. And again, it was later in the match. He had about a minute left and he yeah. tapped him. It was, uh, I, I kind of want to see the hand position on it because I want, again, I like stupid choke variation names or names for very specific positions. So I really couldn't see where his hand finish, finishing position was. I would like to see why they call it a comatine as opposed to just a regular guillotine. Um, obviously, there's a reason. Some hand position I can't see. I'm interested in seeing it. So I'm going to look that up after this recording. Word. So that'll do it for the recap section of the podcast. On to the preview section of the podcast. There is uh, one event next week that we are aware of, Fight to Win Pro 79 in Columbus, Ohio. This event is main evented by a 170-pound black belt gi match, Vitor Oliveira versus Bill the Grill Cooper. Oliveira. I know, man. I, was, I knew you were going to call me on it as soon as I fucked it up. That's going to be a fire match. Oh, yeah. I wonder if it's it's gi. I was about to say, I wonder it if it's a, this, and it says it's a gi. match. Right there. I mean, we've seen Cooper in back and forth in the Gi and Fight to Win like frequently. We see and we've and seen no Oliveira in there as well. Yeah, but it's a Gi match. That's exciting. On to the next match. Co-main event, supposedly. 190-pound black belt no Gi match. Dante Leon versus Joe Baize or Baize? Joe Baize, I Every think it is. Every time. I think it's Baize. We fucked it up. We've called is him Is it Baize? I think it's... I think it's Baize. We've, okay. Let's go with Baize. Okay. Uh, super heavyweight black belt gi match, Dustin Ware versus Chris Larkin. At one point, does it become super heavyweight? Uh, I'm not sure if we're right to win, but I think super heavyweight is above 265. And man, I know it's above 265. Anything above that is a super heavyweight match. Technically, I believe fight to win uses MMA weight classes. So I super heavyweight would be above 265. Okay, cool. 225, 220 pound black belt no gi match george euler versus michael bernhard i was like bernard no bernhard 215 pound black there are a lot of big dudes mm -hmm. 215 pound black belt gi matches chad fields versus jordan sullivan 190 pound black belt gi match bj nelson versus adam hager 180 pound black belt gi match Tom Feister versus Rocky Edwards, 170-pound black belt nogi match. John Stutzman versus David Gamo. Wait, is that 
that David Gamo, the dude that was on uh Garmo, Josh, there's an R in there. Oh, I tr- ooh, yeah, yes, there is. That David Garmo. Yeah, from uh from Quintet. Mm-hmm. That's Same right. Dude. It's Detroit Jiu Jitsu. Same yep. guy. Cool. Excited to see him. Cool beans. Excited to see him. He was very active. 135 pound black belt gi match. Lara Halleck versus Pamela uh Boveda Aguirre. Oh man. And that does it for the black belt. So Looks like a fun card. Again, as always, looks like a fun card. The top couple matches are exciting. Love seeing David Garmo after his performance on Quintet, so Ooh. it'll be exciting. Looky, looky here. 185-pound brown belt no-gi match. Uh, Allison Linder versus the big bird, Brittany Elkin. Ooh, that's good. Looking forward to that. Cool that she's hopping in. I mean, it's a grappling match, so you can't say, oh, like, oh you're hopping in really quick after a fight. She is happening. It's what, been two weeks? Something like she that. She fought Kayla Harrison. Like, that's pretty quick. So props to her for getting back in, you know, real quick. She's been she's been posting. just looking good. So excited to see it. Indeed. So that will do it for this extremely hot edition of the Grappling Rewind podcast. Dial on hot fire hot? No, as in like um, it's hell in my basement <laughs> and I want to get AC back so quickly. They Ow. fixed the thing. Is, they fucking fixed it a week ago and then it broke again. The week, like, it literally, I, they fixed it last Monday, and then Friday afternoon, I got home, and I was like, huh, why is the AC blowing hot air again? Oh, God, it's going to be 95 the next three days in Baltimore. I checked downstairs, I was like, yep, the AC's broken in the same way it was before. Cool, I'm going to have no AC this weekend. Sick. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been super hot, so we, go, we went to belt promotions for our gym, and it was super hot there, and then I got to go home to a super hot house, and uh, it's been hot all fucking weekend. I'm yeah. dying. Once again, if you're on the Fight to Win Pro Baltimore card, that's 82. That's in a couple of weeks, the 28th. Check out Rule 7 Meal Prep. They got seven meals on the menu, each with seven ingredients or less. Each of those ingredients has seven or less ingredients in it, so you're not going to get a sauce with 55 ingredients in that sauce. A buttload of sugar and other things and dyes and whatnot. No. Fresh stuff. The good good. So get in contact with them via Facebook, via Instagram, something. They will work something out with you so you don't really have to worry about food. Just worry about getting ready for that match. With that, this has been the Grappling Rewind. I'm Josh. I'm Maine. We'll see you on the mats. As always, you can email us at thegrapplingrewind at gmail.com. You can check us out on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, and pretty much anywhere you can find Facebook podcast we're on facebook grappling rewind instagram grappling rewind twitter grappling rewind reach out to us on social media if you got something you want us to cover you want to clarify you know we are here you want to tell us we're idiots hey let us know you want us to pronounce your name correctly let us know subscribe subscribe on the youtube page leave us a review helps us out a lot it helps us out and you know it eventually will help you out we like to give back we're doing this as something that isn't done, so help us help you. Again, as always, I'm Josh. I'm Maine. And this is the Grappling Rewind Podcast. We'll see you on the mats.